We are delighted to announce that His Highness Prince Rama Verma is arriving. We would like to introduce him to you all. His Highness Prince Rama Verma is an acclaimed Indian classical musician and a respected member of the erstwhile royal family of Travancore. He is a Carnatic vocalist and an exponent of Saraswati Veena. He is also recognized as a music teacher, musicologist, writer and orator. He has performed at concerts and conducted music workshops in India and several other countries. With great pleasure, I would like you all to join me in inviting him to the stage. The stage is all yours, sir. Good morning, friends. It's my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, I was, we, we were having a discussion how to go about this, whether I'll give a talk for 45 minutes, and at the end, you can ask questions for 15 minutes, but I thought more interactive would be better. So as I'm speaking, if somebody wants to say something or ask something, please feel free. It is not like I'm one wise guy who has all the answers who is just here to preach. <laughs> so you are all students. Uh, I am also a student, except that I am probably 30 years older than you. I've been studying South Indian classical music from 1982, and I'm still studying. So uh, IIT students, your subject, your area of work, and my area of work is completely different. So I kind of see it as in a flight, for example, a poet is sitting next to a football player. And both of them might be very good at their job, but their, the challenges they face in life, the kind of intelligence they have, everything is totally different. So they have a conversation and learn and understand more about each other's life and lessons and uh, stuff like that. So I'll just sing uh, one line, uh, maybe a few seconds of a song. I'd like to see if somebody is familiar with that. I'm not here to sing. I'm not going to sing the whole time. Just this one line. Hari Om Hari Om Hari Has anybody heard this? Somebody? Oh, one person, okay. More than one person has heard this? Anywhere? Only one person has heard. Okay, you know <laughs> from where this is? Bajubara, very good. It is uh, 44 years since, uh, you know who sang this? Uh, Muhammad Rafi sang this. So it is 44 years since Rafi Sahib passed away yesterday. So I am a South Indian Malayali Carnatic musician in year 2024, singing a song sung by a gentleman who died 44 years ago from a film which was more than 70 years ago. So uh, for me, these days people have different uh, definitions of success. The number of views and likes you have in Instagram, for example. So, but for me, uh, success is something which lasts beyond our time. So I'll give you a very, very, very small uh, synopsis of the story of the film Baiju Bhavara, which happened uh, 70 years ago. I'm not going to talk about Bollywood films, but to bring us to my topic. So uh, Baiju Bhavara, it's there available on YouTube. So if you search for Baiju Bhavara and you have three hours to spare, we can watch the movie. It's a legend. We don't know whether it's historically accurate or not. But one of the greatest musicians the world has ever seen, our country has ever seen, was Mia Tansen. And once when Mia Tansen was practicing in his palace, one bhajan mandali, they were singing Ram Ram and walking outside. 
So that disturbed Than Sen's practice. And though Than Sen did not know, his guards went and beat up the guy who was singing. He was beaten up so badly that he died. But he had a young son who was phenomenally talented. So he grew up wanting to take revenge against Than Sen because Than Sen's people killed his father. But Than Sen had abs absolutely no idea about this. He was very, very talented. His name was Baiju Bhavra. He was little like crazy, so Bhavra was added to his name. Then he goes uh, to learn music properly from Than Sen's guru, who was Swami Haridas, who lived as a recluse in an ashram. So he goes and learns music, and he comes and uh, challenges Than Sen to a duet, a duel, and he beats him. So when he beats him, the fire of revenge which was burning in him finished. Then King Akbar asks him, what do you want as reward for beating Than Sen? He says, the only reward I want is that this episode should be forgotten completely. I don't want this to be remembered. Of course, they made a film about this later. So why I remember this is that Than Sen is one of the greatest musicians. His guru was Swami Haridas. His guru was Sangeeta Pitamaha Sri Purandara Dasa. So Purandara Dasa, uh, whether we are from Kerala or Karnataka or Tamil Nadu, whether we live in America, if we learn South Indian classical music, all the basic steps we do were set by Purandara Dasa 600 years ago. And Purandara Dasa had a very, very, very interesting life. He was a mercenary, he was a money lender and a jeweler. And he loved money and power and nothing else. Uh, the first half of his life. So uh, I saw on the internet somebody had calculated the value of one unit of currency at that time. It was not rupee, I think something else, 600 years ago. And that was like so many times uh, stronger than the Indian rupee right now. In, with that currency, he made one crore first. And then he put one golden thing on his roof. Like that, he made nine crores at that time, 600 years ago, which is something we can't even imagine. He was probably the, the richest guy in the world, or one of the richest guys in the world. And he proudly called himself Navakoti Narayana, because he had nine crores, and each time he would build one golden thing on his roof. But his wife was a very nice lady who was generous, and she would help other people. She would feed beggars and so that. But Purandara Dasa, at that name, his name was not Purandara Dasa yet. So he would forbid her, you should not help anybody. Even one rupee, you have to save, save, save like that. So uh, he got to know that when he was away in his shop, his wife was actually helping people. So once he locked up everything at home, there was no money, no drink, no food, no fruits, nothing at all. And then he himself disguised as a wandering Swamiji and came home. And he asked his wife, can you please help me with something? Bhiksha do. So wife looked everywhere and she couldn't find anything at all. But she, she couldn't let this man just go away. So she took off her wedding ring and gave it to him. So then it is Purandadasa himself. So he's so livid that his wife gave away the ring. So he went back to his shop and took off his disguise and he came home. And then he looked straight away at his wife's hand and he said, what happened to your ring? So she said, oh, I've just kept it in the puja room. Oh, dear, yeah, then you bring it to me. So she goes to the puja room and she prays to God and she says, see, I see every human being, every Swamiji, every wandering monk as an image of you. So I'm just helping God by helping these people and now you have to help me. And the legend goes, I was not there 600 years ago, but uh, the story goes that the ring magically appeared on her finger. So he came, she came out and said, see, Here's my ring. So and he was so stunned because he himself had actually taken the ring. Then he said, how did this happen? Uh, then she told the truth. So this is what happened. Then he realized that the Navakoti is nothing. There is some, something else beyond that. So he decided to turn his miraculous brain to spirituality and devotion and God and whatever. So he told his wife and children, we will give up, give up everything. So they gave up everything, the house, the jewelry, the money, and with just what they could carry, some food and clothes, they left the palace. Then he told his family, 
when we leave this palace, you should not even look back. Because when you look back, oh, see, I've left behind such a big palace, then that bit of ego will come with you. So you just leave, go as a blank, and then he went to Pandharpur and he composed so many phenomenal songs, which are still alive 600 years later. And because he was, he had lived both lives as a spiritual guy and as a material guy, he knew all aspects of life. And if you, if anybody of you follow the cartoons by R.K. Lakshman, so R.K. Lakshman drew some pictures in 1950s, 60s, 70s. Now the budget just happened. You see an R.K. Lakshman cartoon from 40 years ago, even now it is relevant. So because the universal uh, truth of the human condition, uh, Purandra Dasa has. So, uh, and when he was a jeweler and he would sell diamonds, he would come to the Maharaja's court and Maharaja, of course, was the boss of everybody. So the jeweler, even though he's a millionaire, he has to stand like this. And he says, I brought a new diamond. So Maharaja will see that and, ah, very good, and he'll pay him. But after Purandradasa gave up everything, he didn't have anything at all. And during that time, 600 years ago, without Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, he, he already became such a celebrity that many, many people started to come to get his blessings. So the Maharaja also heard about this great saint at Pandharpur, and he also went to get his blessings. And when he's standing like that, Purandadasa recognized him and he said, when I was nine crore, Navakoti Narayana, I used to come and stand like this in front of you. Now I have nothing, but you are coming and standing in front of me like that. So that is a, another kind of a wealth also. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have lived in the 20th century uh, for two decades and 21st century for two decades. So change has always been happening. But uh, the rate of change which is happening during the last 15, 20 years is kind of overwhelming. In a positive way, technology has made our life so much simpler. When I first used to learn music, for example, my guru would sing something, I have to repeat, and he would go home. So there's nothing written, nothing recorded. So the next time when he comes, again he'll sing, again have to, I have to repeat. So it goes on like that. And great concerts which happened before I was born, there were private collectors who would just save these recordings and not share with anybody. Now all that has changed. We have uh, YouTube, we have many sites which share recordings and all that. But on the negative side, uh, when I was a young person in Kerala, in Tiruvannathapuram in 1960s, 70s, in my class, somebody is called Rajesh or Santosh. We don't know he, whether he's Santosh George or Santosh Menon or Santosh Ayer. We never bothered about who was, what religion, what caste, what was their financial status. So one of my friends says, who has been friends with me for 10 years, he says, oh, my father is retiring tomorrow. And then we realized we don't know what his father was doing. Maybe he was a CEO of a company. Maybe he was stacking books in a bookshop. But it didn't matter. All of us were the super rich to normal rich to average to little poor. In school, in college, we were always the same. In dress, in behavior, if it is Christmas, we would all go and eat in a Christian friend's house. If it is Onam, they would, Muslims and Christians would come to a Hindu household and eat. So like that, now I find a lot of difference both in uh, religion and in financial status. I mean, you have the super rich who will flaunt their latest 10 crore car and jewelry and uh, costumes and jewels and whatever. And the poor people are made to feel that they, are, they don't make the cut. So which is uh, kind of little sad. Uh, and uh, I've spent a lot of time in other countries and each country we live, if we have an open mind, we can assimilate uh, so many things from their language, from their culture. You see, I'm a Malayali, I speak Malayalam and English, but Purandradasa songs are in Kannada. We have Annamacharya, Bhadrachal Ramadasa, Tyagaraja songs in Telugu. We have great uh, Subramanya Bharatiyar and others in Sanskritam. We have Maharaja Swadhutirinal, Bhutusambi Dekshitir in uh, Sanskritam. So all these languages, chunks of wisdom are kind of left to us by the great masters who might have lived uh, several centuries ago, but which we can uh, still use. Uh, is anybody learning classical music, Karnatic or Hindustani here? If you can raise your hand. You are late. You learn Hindustani? Or? 
from here or oh okay, nice i was very happy uh, this was uh, probably around uh, 15 20 years ago sony tv had a program called india's child genius i don't know how many of you followed maybe you were a little too young there were school children and around 3000 people participated it became lesser and lesser and finally the final rounds there were around 15 20 students uh, india's child genius they were all below 15 i think and out of the 15 20 people uh, participating around 19 20 of them they were learning some form of music whether it is Carnatic or Hindustani or Western or an instrument or piano. So music really, really helps us a lot. So this is just a few words about music. See, the way society is now, the way our people rule the country, I find that it is a surefire recipe to drive people either to depression or to alcohol or to drugs or to the therapist's couch or out of the country. So this happens a lot, which is very sad. But uh, how does Carnatic music help me? When I look at one song by Purandar Dasa, for example, which was composed 600 years ago, he says, Satya Vantari Gidu Kala Valla. Satya Vantari, people who tell the truth, Idu, this is not the time for them. Dushtha Janari Gidu Subhiksha Kala. For cruel people, this is a prosperous time. Upakara Madidare Apakarisuakara. If you help somebody, they will screw you. Now, this 600 years ago he has written. Or Annamacharya, Talapaka Annamacharya, who is called Padakavita Pitamaha, who is even more senior to Purandar Dasa, 600 plus some years. So he has written a song called Teliya Chika Tiki. So he says, when it is dark, you bring light, we can understand. But when it is already light, what is the point in bringing one more lamp there? Then he says, when somebody is starving, we feed them, I can understand. But when somebody is already well-fed and is burping, you give some more food, what is the point? So like that, he gives several examples and concludes by, he is complaining to Lord Venkateshwara in Tirupati. He says, people like me, you have been ignoring, you are always ignoring. But the people you have already blessed, abundantly you are showering them with even more blessings then we realize that oh 600 years ago or 50 years ago reading rk lakshman's cartoons the human condition was always the same so it doesn't uh, improve our situation but when we know that it was kind of the same so they were never go good old days see when we watch black and white movies for example they used acoustic instruments and not electronic instruments. So the songs, lyrics were meaningful, the melodies were sweet, though many of them were stolen. So now we have many sites uh, which give the original tune and the stolen tune from Bollywood films. So, so many of my big heroes uh, whom I still like, but it's like, oh, oh, this song they have stolen from Hungary and from Hollywood films and whatever. But when we watch those black and white films, we think of an era which is more innocent and more genuine and whatever. But at the same time, really terrible things like the Second World War and the Armenian genocide and what the Japanese Imperial Army did. So many really bad things were happening at that time also. If we read the Mahabharata or any of the epics, we find from the same family members how people can be jealous, how people can uh, betray people and steal other people's credit. So whatever we face now, it has all been there all the time. So within that, like a minefield, we somehow have to stumble along. So I have stumbled along for 55 years, but uh, each of us have our own story, our own uh, cross to bear, our own battles to fight. One thing I find, uh, which is little different from my childhood is that at that time there were more originals than duplicates. If you look at Hindi film songs, for example, I like Kishore Kumar, somebody likes Mahod Rafi, somebody likes Mukesh, somebody likes Hemant Kumar or Talad Mahmood or Manade. Each of them had their own distinct style and they sounded different. Each of them were good, not like 15 people or 300 people trying to sing like Kishore Kumar or trying to sing like Muhammad Rafi, which, which happens now. So in dress, in Carnatic music also, we had great, great musicians. We might have our own tastes and preferences, but uh, each of them was original. Now I find 
if Virat Kohli has a particular kind of beard, there will be three million people who have the same beard <laughs> because Virat Kohli has that beard. So uh, Korean uh, group BTS follows some trend. Then one <laughs> one bunch of people they'll follow exact not because I the, they did so I also do. So this kind of blind uh, cloning uh, is happening much more than earlier. I started giving uh, Carnatic concerts in 1990, but I went to college from 1985 when I had absolutely no idea. Uh, no intention of ever becoming a Carnatic musician, but with the this kind of hot, uh, humid weather in Kerala, I always dressed like this. In fact, I wanted to show off my dhoti to you, but it's covered by this podium. So I'll stand up and show you. <laughs> no, no. no, no, I was just joking. So, but this... In, in school, you can, now I'm an old man, I was 15 years old, just past 10th standard, and I used to go to college dressed like this. And everyone used to make fun of me. They used to call me the Malayalam equivalent of mama or dada or, or whatever. I would always carry a full-sized umbrella with me. It was, I was not following anybody. It, it was my style. And I follow, there's a very famous song popularized by Frank Sinatra called My Way. If you have heard that, if you haven't heard that, you just Google it and watch the song. It is a, good things, bad things. I live my life and I've reached the final stage and I did everything my way. So I'm not saying anybody should do my way, but each of you should try and find your way and not blind. You can follow somebody. We, nobody is just independent swayambhu. But uh, we can get inspiration from others, but not just be clones or copies of other people. So I used to wear dress like this and I would always carry an umbrella and most of the people used to, they'll whistle at me or make rude comments or whatever, they'd call me Amava and whatever. But one day it would rain very heavily and only I would have an umbrella and I could lift my dhoti so that it doesn't get wet and the few people who did not tease me, I would take them in my car and drop them home. So this happened a lot and finally people stopped uh, making fun of my dress when they realized it had a practical reason. So when I, if I go and live outside India, I don't dress like this because it will be freezing cold. So the dress, the food, the culture, the tradition of each place is very geographically uh, connected. So uh, just because somebody dresses like this in New York or in Korea or in Japan, it may not suit when we are living in Chennai or Hyderabad or Varanasi. So that, that is another thing, I, I'm just sharing some thoughts, not advice or preaching. I'm just sharing some thoughts. As I said, you are all young students and I'm an old student. So if anybody would like to say something or ask something, you are most welcome. I'm, I'm not a scary guy who is here. If you say something, I want to attack you. I, I'm curious. In fact, I would be happy, more happy to sit there and listen to somebody talk than I benefit more than sit here and just uh, say something. So this is, um, so any time if you, somebody wants to say something, you can just raise your hand. Uh, we want to share something. So I come from uh, an erstwhile royal family. Uh, my name is Rama Varma. I never use prince or his highness or any of those things. But others use that because for them it's a prestige to say that, oh, a prince came to a place. No, I'm just an ordinary guy. But in the Carnatic music field, because when I first started singing, I had no control over how my name was printed. So it kind of became a brand name, Prince Ramavarma. So if I ask myself, Prince of which country? The country is called Travancore. And Tra can you show me Travancore in the Indian map? No, because Travancore ceased to exist in 1947. So it is kind of ridiculous to be a king or princess or queen of a kingdom which ceased to ex exist in 1947. But I lived in the palace with an actual Maharaja who ruled a kingdom, who had a currency notes and stamps with his picture. And I had the privilege of living in the same building with him for 23 years with a true blue Maharaja. And he was one of the most extraordinary, amazing human beings I have ever seen. For him, the transition from king to a commoner was just overnight. At that time, I, I was not yet born. 
but i know people who knew him when he was a, actually ruling and the transition was absolutely no problem while people surrounding him found it more difficult there are people who are even now alive who still imagine that they are uh, ruling over some imaginary piece of land and they feel entitled so that is another uh, point i'd like to share with you about being entitled so i have a family background of many people being entitled because they are born in a certain family in my field which is carnatic music so you look at uh, wimbledon for example roger federer rafael nadal djokovic they win amounts of money which we can't even imagine for one championship but they come carrying their own tennis racket and after the match they pack pack up all their things and lug it and go uh, alone while in my field the, the moment you start singing a little bit you are 18 years old 20 years old and you have three disciples already you come marching on the stage and your disciples will carry your tanpura and book and uh, water bottle and other things so and people call you guru garu and they touch your feet and they fall at your feet very 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 soon it is easy for people to lose any track of reality and start imagining that you are some you have horns and a tail or a halo or something like that so th many people ask me in carnatic music like purandadasa the great 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 nuggets of wisdom are left to us by purandadasa tyagaraja people like that we sing their songs and so many musicians if you interact with them at close quarters they are I mean, pardon my language but they are assholes <laughs> so how come you sing all these great spiritual things and you become an asshole it is not because you sing these spiritual songs it is because of the adulation because from the beginning when you win a prize in a competition when you give a concert people are all, the people are just feeding your ego feeding your ego feeding your ego so despite singing all these things this goes to the head so it is one like cancer for example uh, one cell happens and it grows inside you you don't realize but it's just spreading all over inside you by the time you diagnose that it's third stage or fourth stage same way without our realizing it uh, we can lose track of reality and since you are in iit obviously you have already crossed several bridges and you have reached here which is very obvious that your intellect is superior but when your intellect is superior naturally you will find uh, the tendency to become narcissists so again narcissist also you can just google if you don't know it already if you see what is what are the signs of a narcissist 1 2 3 4 5 some points will be there and you will feel oh my god this is just like that person i know you know so uh, unfortunately and in any whether it's in a family in a political party in a country in an outfit in an institution more and more narcissists are right on top so they are there and the people below them are just feeding 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 their ego this happens a lot also which is very unfortunate i mean there's no so i don't see any solution to that except that i'm just sharing this thought that if you are in touch with a narcissist you don't have to feel you're the only one we are we are we're all in the same situation we have to face these people and deal with these people so i'm just talking whatever come, comes to my mind as i said if somebody wants to say something or ask something it will make it more interesting yeah please uh, you have a mic yeah, yeah please can say hello uh, you, you can even come here uh, then people can see you uh, on the video and if that mic is not working you can use my mic so a while ago you talked about languages and culture so speaking of languages and culture did you ever experience one language melting into other uh, i am actually asking this because i ancestrally belong to a region where uh, odia happens to melt, melt into bengali I, I, I can you come here I, there's some echo I mean, language melting into another language <laughs> come come i'm sorry i dragged you out but uh, there's some echo so i couldn't hear you properly <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
others can hear also. Okay. Uh, so I was just asking that, uh, uh, have you ever experienced one language melting into other or uh, a really strange dialect where uh, there is 50-50 mix of every words? I know that's quite interesting, but I'm asking this because I ancestrally belong to a region where uh, Odia melts into Bengali and uh, there is a combination of both the cultures. We follow Jagannath culture, we eat Rasugulla, we use Odia patas, but at the same time we also have to, like, uh, you know, uh, revere Rabindranath Tagore as much as Pakistan Senapati. It's very beautiful. I, I'm very happy you shared this. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much uh, for coming out. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you can sit. Um, so, you, you can sit. I mean, so, you can sit in front also. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I from, come from Kerala, and actually, Malayalam is a, just like uh, he said, Malayalam is a combination of Sanskritam and Tamil. So, there are so many words in Malayalam which are same word in Tamil and same word uh, in Sanskritam. And uh, I'm very, very happy he brought up the subject of language because language is one of the most powerful weapons for integration. Suppose a Japanese guy or an African guy or a white guy comes to us and even wrongly says a few words in our language, we feel very happy. Oh, wow, he, he's made the effort. So, uh, Malayalam is... Sanskritam and uh, Tamil. Similarly, Telugu and Kannada are also very similar. Even in the script, uh, if you don't know uh, how to read Telugu, Kannada, they all look like jalebis only. <laughs> so, but uh, I have lived for some time uh, in Chennai, and just like giving a talk like this in English, I can give a talk in Tamil on stage. I have spent some time in Bombay, now Mumbai, because of which I can give a talk like this in Hindi also. Similarly, I have spent some time in Paris, because of which I, can, I have given lecture demonstrations about music in French. So uh, you can search on YouTube. You can find uh, me speaking in, I think, Tamil and French is there, but Hindi I don't know. So why is it not to say, oh, I speak three languages. Now I'm living in Bangalore. I'm settled in Bangalore, and I'm trying to learn Kannada. So many people, they want to travel to some other place, but they are not prepared to integrate with the local culture. So uh, I will do my dress, my language, my everything, but I want the money and facilities from that country. So that is very sad. And since you are IITNs, I'm sure many, many of you will uh, go to other countries also. So it, it's very, very good to learn the local language. And uh, so I, I hope that much sooner than later, I would be able to converse or uh, give a discourse in Telugu and Kannada. I'm, I'm working on that now. Now, at least if somebody speaks to me in Telugu, somebody speaks to me in Kannada, I can understand. Uh, if they prompt me a little bit, I can speak also, but it's not yet uh, fluent because language, uh, but again, uh, religion, language, so many things are there, but music, I find uh, I have to give some uh, propaganda to the importance of learning music, you know, because uh, a Muslim priest will be praying to Allah, a Christian priest will be praying to Jesus, a Hindu priest will be praying to uh, Shiva or Rama or Hurve. But in music, the seven notes or the twelve notes we have, whether we are Carnatic musicians, Hindustani musicians, Western musicians, Japanese musicians, Arabic musicians, the da 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 sa pa sa. It's exactly the same. There are no uh, other notes. There are some Muslim scales where the other notes also come. But the basic scale, all over the world, uh, we, so which is why it is one of the greatest uh, beautiful weapons. I mean, there can be weapons of destruction, but beautiful weapons to bring people together. Uh, sir, you have something? Yes. <laughs> See, um, during lockdown, when most of us were locked down, we had no idea how long it was going to go on and whether we'll survive. No, of course, survive, any of us can die any day. That, uh, it doesn't have to be because of pandemic. If we are aware of that, that any day, any of us, not only me, but any of us can pop it, then uh, our values and 
the principles in life will change because we won't be hoarding, hoarding so much money, thinking, oh, I'm going to use it 30 years later, 30 years later, we may not be there. And we may not hold grudges and be nasty to people. I have a good friend, I just say something nasty and then he goes and dies in a uh, bike accident means then we can never repair that. So if we just keep in mind that maybe we won't meet again, then we'll always be nice. That is one thing. So during the pandemic, uh, I was stuck at home alone. And instead of going crazy, uh, I started making videos for YouTube. So uh, I had some co actual concerts video, uh, concert videos were there already on YouTube, but they were videos from real concerts. I had never made a video for putting up on YouTube. That started in 2020, May. So then I shared a lot of uh, insights about music some compositions in Telugu and Sanskritam in Tamil, in Kannada, which was a chance for me also to learn the lyrics. One of the big handicaps with classical music is that we have a lot of scope for improvisation. So if we improvise means these seven notes, just like talking till the breath lasts, we can sing. You can just go on like that. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, that is, <laughs> I, I have a wonderful, in fact, I'm getting goosebumps because I didn't intend to sing and get, an, get a round of applause, <laughs> but it's very sweet of you, thank you. So, <laughs> oh my God. thank you. Thank you so much. So, because whatever I sang now, it is just absolute music, there are no lyrics. We can just improvise. So, because we improvise the compositions which have lyrics, which have meaning, which have so much soul, so much intellect. Many singers, they don't pay any attention to the lyrics. So they just sing some lyrics and use them as an excuse to do what I just did. So uh, the grip over seven notes is like a weapon. So any music, any song in any language, we can grasp very quickly if we have the grasp of the seven notes. How many of you have seen the 1968 movies, The Sound of Music? One. So one person has seen Baiju Bhavra and one person has seen Sound of Music. Sound of Music nobody has seen. It's a must watch. It's a very, very, very beautiful movie set during the Second World War. So they have uh, one song. So do la fa mi do re. You know how to sing? You can sing that? So do, la ti do re do. This is do re mi fa sol. <laughs> so, okay. so, so actually, uh, whatever I am saying in Carnatic music, exactly the same message. Uh, the year I was born in 1968, this movie, do re mi fa, do re mi fa sol la ti are the notes. So she says, so do la, they are the notes, and she sings, when you know the notes to sing, you can sing most anything. You can sing anything. That's the message. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. I think, uh, I think you should invite me here for a music concert. No, not talking. <laughs> So, no, why I said this? Because your boss has requested me to do something now. Uh, so, du during the pandemic, when I made several videos uh, trying to highlight the power of notes, of knowing the notes, I heard one um, joke in Kannada. It was told to me by a Kannada child who was only six years old. So, he said, Sir, in our language, we can say you are fat, uh, which will sound like notes. So you are fat. So you is ni. Ni is you. Dappa. Dappa means you are fat. So ni dappa. Nim appa dappa. Your father is fat. Nimma appa dappa. So nim appa dappa. Nim, your mother is fat. Nim amma dappa. Then your son is fat. 
ni maga dapa so these are all swaram sulli ni dapa ni mapa dapa ni mama dapa ni maga dapa like that so this is an old joke i didn't make it and the skid also didn't make it it's there in karnataka for probably 100 years but i had not heard anybody sing these swarams only say these notes so i made a silly joke for youtube where i said in malayalam you can say you are fat by ni tadi ennana or ni vulagu lavuga unnaru in telugu aap bahut mota hai in tamil in hindi doesn't sound musical but kannada is very musical because you can say you are fat ni dapa ni mappa dapa ni mamma dapa ni maga so like that so then uh, it's a silly joke but i had not heard somebody sing it so i sang it and then now when i am waiting in bangalore airport or hyderabad airport some guy will come with big smile and say ah i was you you only made that need the pa joke no <laughs> so like so now your boss also wanted me to <laughs> say this but the problem with comedy is that you make one funny video or you make one joke and you get typecast ah he is this funny guy then you may have so many serious things to say which will all just be washed away and they only notice the funny thing you said even uh, my hero kishor kumar he sang so many funny songs that he is branded as a comedian but the sad songs he sang he sang the philosophical sang, songs he sang it is unbelievable what that one man uh, has done but people think of kishor kumar and immediately feel oh kishor kumar sang uh, funny songs mohammad rafi sang Uh, romantic songs and uh, mukesh sang sentimental songs but mohammad rafi if you look we had so many singers but if you look at the hindu devotional song madhuban mera dikana chire for example so many hindu devotional songs maximum were sung by mohammad rafi with lyrics written by majru sultan puri and music given by naushad pictureized on yusuf uh, who is called dilip kumar on screen so this four muslims they left us with this bunch of extraordinary hindu devotional songs which is something there is a lesson in it for all of us to learn since you are all fresh and uh, receptive so what you receive is very very important and politicians they try and try and try to divide people based on color and caste and religion and so many things so try and take humanity as humanity or love as the religion so then uh, we are all the same so we are in different situations in life but basically we are the same so even uh, i've seen great musicians jam together one will be african one will be white and they say see my skin is black his skin is white but you just make one cut the blood is red for everybody so that is uh, one more point would somebody like to say anything or ask anything because i'll be just rambling on i don't have one uh, fixed script yeah hello please. hello hello Sir, good morning, sir. Who, I, you, you are talking, or somebody else is talking? Sir, I am talking. Hey, come, 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 come. Uh-huh. Sir, so first of all, good morning. It's our pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, senior seniors and the college for inviting such a personality. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sir so I wanted to know how did you discover your passion in music were you interested in it from your childhood or did you learn it because you were part of your, the royal family and your ancestors have been exceptional in this art yeah. so this is my question yeah. sir and also a request can we students have the fortune to listen to a m- music sung by you yeah yeah you can i can thank you so much sir thank you thank you <laughs> so uh yeah actually i i was always 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 passionate about music though i never learnt music most of my colleagues when uh, they were 3 4 5 years old they would have a grandmother somebody at home who would teach them music so by the time they are 8 9 years old they would have started either singing for competitions or even giving small small programs but uh, in my 
case i just loved listening to music i never wanted to sing then i was in school in 8th standard i was 13 years old in my school we had an amazing music teacher who just asked me uh, to join the music group so he probably presumed that since i was from the ex royal family i would have already learned this i didn't know the first note was sa at all when i was 13 years old now i have students who are 6 and 7 who sing so beautifully so i tell them you are senior to me because when i was your age i couldn't sing at all so uh, i joined the school music group and uh, we had we had to sing some folk songs the national anthem and, all, and we won a prize at the school youth festival competition then my great grandmother was alive my mother's mother's mother so she was alive till 1983 when i was around 8 13 14 years old and she was completely passionate about music she has even hosted people like pandit ravi shankar and ustad alla rakha and yahudi menuin and uh, lata mangeshkar uh, parvin sultana there are so many legendary musicians uh, who are well known all over the world and of carnatic musicians you name it from ms subalakshmi to shamangri shrinivas r g n bala subramanian so many musicians she used to host them but um, the positive side was that she was very very musical the negative side was that she was very very dominating so when a person is dominating i love chocolate for example but somebody gives a chocolate and just shoves it in my mouth i won't feel like eating it <laughs> so the way something is fed also is very important so because my great grandmother was very dominating she kind of shoved music down the throats of her children and the grandchildren because of which they became uh, not very fond of music <laughs> to put it mildly so uh, i was the great grandson so she had not noticed that i was going around the singing all the time but when i won a prize in school i didn't win it was a group item she was so happy that somebody is showing interest in music and she said you have to learn music properly and if you learn carnatic music it will be very good so i said okay i didn't have anything against carnatic music i was listening to it all the time then uh, without my knowledge which i came to know later she invited all the gurus in my town and selected the diamond the best person possible both as a musician and as a human being his name was vachur harihara subramaniyar and i was literally with him till the day before he died so uh, if he was alive now even now i'll be living in trivandrum and learning from him so i left trivandrum only because my guru died so that was how i started learning music i have a slightly um colorful about 18 uh, i hope all of you are about 18 <laughs> so i have an about 18 story which is very revealing it's not for the uh, naughty content but about the music I, i started today by singing a song from baiju bavara so in that same baiju bavara movie as usual in all movies the boy and girl fall in love and as usual the, the girl's family doesn't allow them to be together so uh, the girl decides to kill herself in baiju bavara so she takes a boat and rows herself to the center of uh, the river which is going to fall down uh, in a waterfall then she throws away the oars so that the boat will go down the waterfall and she'll kill herself so this is the scene and uh, mohammad rafi has sung to ganga ki mauj mein jamuna ka dhara there's a song like that so when i was a kid my father was very big into old hindi film songs so he had told me the story of baiju bavara well i had never watched the film i had only listened to the songs so when i was in my early 20s so i was born in 1968 and it was in 1982 that we got our first television in trivandrum it was 1982 asian games so that is the first time we are seeing a television so now i mean you can watch everything uh, online in your phone also so just imagine how different things were at that time so then as a young man who was 22 years old uh, i was interested in a lady and the lady was interested in me <laughs> so but <laughs> 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 so <laughs> but uh, no 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 i i won't say naughty stories even if you upload i won't say naughty stories because it's going online also <laughs> but uh, this is a true story 
सो जस्ट इमेजिन दिस आई हैव हर्ड दिस तू गंगा की मौज में जमुना का धारा सॉन्ग ऑल माई लाइफ एंड आई हैव हर्ड फ्रॉम माई फादर फ्रॉम माई एज सिक्स और सेवन अबाउट द सीन वे द लेडी गोस इन द मिडल ऑफ अ रिवर एंड शी थ्रोज अ वे द ओर्स एंड द मैन स्टैंड ऑन द शोर एंड ही सिंग्स टू गंगा के मौज मैन विद द पावर ऑफ हिज सिंगिंग द बोट जस्ट कम्स बैक टू द शोर सो विदाउट हर रोइंग सो आई वुड जस्ट इमेजिन इमेजिन द सीन हाउ इज इट हाउ वुड इट लुक टू सी अ रेजिंग रिवर विद अ बोट एंड जस्ट कमिंग टू द शोर आई वॉज अ किड एट दैट टाइम सो at that time as i said with no internet no, no mobile phone no whatsapp even if a lady and a gentleman like each other it's very very difficult to plan a meeting so uh, but uh, this lady informed me with all the difficulties that next week on such and such a day i'll be free you can come home so uh, this reminds me of a silly joke <laughs> so uh, this reminds me of a silly joke one lady tells her boyfriend next week wednesday evening there will be nobody at home so the boyfriend goes and he rings the bell rings the bell there is no answer there is nobody at home <laughs> so that's a silly joke but uh, this is a true story so uh, she fixed the day and time and i was so, so excited i'm only 22 years old and i go to their place and the lady was there nobody else was there they had a tv so she had kept the tv on uh, so that if neighbors listen they'll be they'll be hearing only the sound of the tv <laughs> so then i walk in and we we don't know what I mean, we know what to do but we are kind of <laughs> dec <laughs> deciding what to do <laughs> so so Uh, i mean i i promise you i'm not exaggerate i'll promise you in the name of this water bottle that i'm not exaggerating <laughs> so then we have very limited time one very small time frame before somebody might come and i have to leave and then on this black and white tv the stu ganga ke bauj mein song started so i was 22 years old then from age 6 i have been imagining how the scene would be finally in this juncture i get a chance to see what is going to happen so i said hey wait 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 see now she'll row into the river and he's going to sing and she's going to throw away the oars and she's going to come back and and i'm so excited i'm just looking at this uh, tv not realizing that the lady is getting more and more angry with me <laughs> because and then as i imagine the boat does come and the chorus will sing and i'm like wow finally i saw this song and then i look at her You want to watch film song? Just, just get out. You and your music, you know. So to answer your question, that is when I discovered that how passionate I was about music. So I was just answering his question. <laughs> so, and I promise you, this is a true story. As a musician, I'm a winner, but as a man, of course, I was a loser only. <laughs> but. Yeah, uh, so one other gentleman stood. Yeah, yes, you, you can come. Okay. You're such a bright. Uh, so I, I wish I was a faculty here that I could teach you because it's such a pleasure to be with you here, really. <laughs> Good morning, sir. I am Tejas, and I am from Kerala. I am from Kerala. Ah, yes. Malayali or no? Are they? Not Malayali. Not Malayali. Sorry. See, this is a Malayali greeting. It's like you in America, in Iceland also meet two Malayali. Ah, Malayali or no? Ah, not Malayali. Where are you in Kerala? Okay. Nice. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I was very excited to talk to you. A few words in Malayali. Um, when I heard that uh, one guy is from coming from Bangalore, I was very excited. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. And ई हाव या चेंड पढ़ा चेर चेड पक्षे अब मैं संसाव इला या पढ़ा चेर पक्षे कोरोना कारण निपी सोरी गाय स्टोकिंग इन मलया आक्चलिंग दैट देर एंड इंसट्रमेंट इन केरला दैट को चेड यू गेस मे सो इट इन टी टेलीशन और समथिंग लाइक इन मेलम लाइक दैट I start, just started studying chanda and 
due to corona it's my learning was stopped and i want to hear you something about the instruments in kerala or Excellent. about the instruments yeah, thanks I'll, sir I'll, thank you thank okay you. in fact he comes from he comes from the part of india which served the yummiest prawns so in alappi alappi prawns are like legendary in kerala anyway so uh, he he spoke this is again something which you like i said you watch bijo bavra watch sound of music this is something you just search on youtube chenda melam c h e n d a chenda melam it is a form of percussion which is particular to kerala temples where uh, 10 15 20 300 people they beat out the drums and this of course watching on youtube will only give you like 1% impact this is something you have to travel to kerala and experience live because it's like a wave of sound which hits your whole body and the rhythm builds up like dum dum from this finally it becomes very 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 fast but the build up is very 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 slow it takes hours and hours to build up and so he just said he was learning he gave me good news and bad news at the same time he said he has learned chanda which is good news but that he has given up which is <laughs> sad so many of you if you learn uh, not classical music if you learn dance or classical music or guitar or keyboard or singing anything don't let your work uh, your uh, relationships your marriage family life ever take that away from you one of the greatest blessings i have had was that maybe because i dress like this from the time i was very young i made friends with many people who were much older than me and much older as in 60 years older than so when i was 20 they'll be 80 and many people i had a best friend who was half swiss and half russian he lived till he was 94 years old and he was he was a multi millionaire self made millionaire that is one side my music gurus they were south indian brahmins who learned carnatic music my both two of my gurus were in their late 80s and 90s when they died but apart from guru shishya we were very very close as human beings and they would share so many life lessons with me so so many lessons are the same the regrets they have the regrets they don't have and one of the greatest regrets i have seen again and again and again and again is from people who are above 40 50 who have given up some form of art which they used to learn and which they used to even excel in when they were young because of financial constraints and job and family life and whatever so later because if you have music suppose i am waiting at the airport and the flight is late means physically i'll be sitting like this but mentally i'll be singing some song because now saturday and sunday i have a teaching session in hyderabad so i'm continuously preparing for that so in the airport also i'll be the plane can be 4 hours late i won't even realize in fact i have to take care not to miss the flight sitting at the departure gate because mentally this will be going on sometimes when you sing little too much and you start moving people see you and they'll feel you are crazy and talking to yourself like that. now of course with hands free phone set it's little better but earlier i've actually ha- had my friends tell me uh, in trivandrum uh, i saw you driving yesterday and it looked like you were talking to yourself i said no no i was singing in my car <laughs> so uh, i don't know about the time because uh, whenever uh, now whenever we feel hungry we can stop so i'll conclude with just one uh, request to all of you if you look at the media and if you look at uh, social media real media and life itself we find so many of the greatest brains in the world fully engaged in either creating things of destruction i mean earlier during maharaja's time if two maharajas two kingdoms had a fight means the army would be led by the maharaja first he will be holding a sword and riding a horse and so he faces the risk of being killed first so that was how battles were fought but now two countries are at war means the leaders are completely safe only the poor young fresh brilliant jawans who are 18 years old who are even your age or little older than you they are the ones who get killed who get their limbs blown off and whatever while the leaders are the ones who make the war and now new technology drones so we can just send a drone and it will go and kill somebody so so much of 
uh, intellect is used either in creating weapons of destruction or just you make an Apple iPhone, for example, so it has so many facilities, then next year a new model will come which will have something so attractive that even if our phone is perfectly all right, we'll feel like chucking this and buying the next phone. So just for commercial reasons, to tempt people to go on buying more and how much of disaster this is happening uh, in ecologically in the whole world, we can find everywhere. We always had summer, we always had winter, we always had rains, but the extreme weather patterns, if you just observe, especially during the last 20 years, in Dubai they had floods, in Dubai they had snowfall. We, we can't even imagine snow in the desert. So everywhere it's getting screwed up in a big way. So if you plan to have children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, try and think about them also and try and leave something beautiful and something useful for them and use these phenomenal superior brains of yours to do something nice also, not just uh, something which will generate money or uh, create weapons that uh, destroy the world. So I, I'm, I'm a Carnatic musician and I'm singing songs left to us by Maharaja Swaditrinal 250 years ago, by Purandar Dasa 600 years ago. So th they still work, they are still alive. The, physically the composers might have died, but the wealth of good energy, wisdom, spiritual wealth they have left us is still continuing. So I'm 100% sure, see, uh, I am a big follower, though physically, no, I'm a big follower of the intellect of Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee. Again, Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali, they died so many years ago, but if you read stuff they have written, uh, like Swami Vivekananda, the words are full of fire and energy. So Bruce Lee has always said, you try and do something which nobody has done before in your field. So in my field, what I find is that so many people sing Kannada and Telugu and Tamil and Sanskritam uh, without knowing the meaning. So I started at that time without internet, without uh, Google. I would ask native speakers for the meanings of songs in Kannada, in Telugu. And when I realized, oh, you, you, the song is so beautiful, it's so popular, everybody knows, but nobody knows the meaning. So I would start explaining the meaning. And at that time, I was very young, 22, 25. Then the listeners who are 60, 65, 70, 80, they would say, hey, just shut up and sing, don't speak. We know, we, we have been listening to the song even before we were born. So, uh, because they were angry that one kid was explaining the meaning. So I w worked a way around this. I will first say, I'm sure, of course, all of you know the meaning of the song. But just in case there is someone who doesn't know the meaning, I want to explain the meaning just for his or her benefit. So those of you who know the meaning, please forgive me. Like that I used to say. But I always explain the meaning. And uh, despite people in Tamil, they say, It's like, don't speak, just sing. And having done that now for 34 years, finally I'm invited here to speak. <laughs> so not to sing. So I've been doing something right, I feel. So in whichever field you are, whichever field you choose, just try not just blindly follow, blindly follow some uh, cricket player or Bollywood star or spiritual guru or politician. These are the four which eat up all the money, all the media space in our country. Either the ruler said this, the opposition said this, that comes so much of uh, media time is taken up. Or this film star got married, that person got divorced, the latest movie is coming, that is the other thing. Then uh, we have normal cricket, we have IPL, then we have T20. So th just these three, four fields are eating up everything, which is why now Olympic Games are going on. And some person wins one bronze medal, we are like, wow, we won bronze. We should be bringing 10 to 50 gold medals with the power we have in. Uh, but because all the money, all the focus is taken with these three or four fields, which is very sad. So I am happy that I chose Carnatic music and it has come with its set of challenges, but it has come with its set of rewards also. And uh, this is the, now I can reveal, this, this is the first time in my life that I have ever addressed a gathering like this. So you have been so kind to me, so generous. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay. Song. You can call me to 
and give a concert. I'll give it. <laughs> he wants me to sing a song. That'll be a little too much, no? <laughs> no? Yeah. Um, now it's 11:20. I'll give sing a five-minute song. You can bear it. You, you, you can face the music for five minutes. <laughs> so. Okay. Let me see. Now that I'm officially going to sing, I'll just. Uh, uh, switch on something here. So, so you can sit now. After five minutes, you can come. <laughs> I'll sing a song. <laughs> yeah. So this is a song um, composed by my legendary guru who was called Dr. Mangalam Palli Bala Murali Krishna. He was a composer who composed more than 300 songs and he passed away quite recently in 2016. I had the privilege of spending 18 years with him. So this is called a Tillana. In uh, Hindustani music you call it a Tarana. It is except the last line it has no lyrics it is just rhythmic syllables which ideally would make a person feel like dancing <clears throat> many many Carnatic compositions are where the composer cries to God Tyagaraja will cry to La Rama I have been praying to you for such a long time but you are not giving you are not blessing me complain complain but, but there are many many happy songs also so this is one of the happy songs mm. Mm -hmm. Tillana Nadridim Tillana Nadridim Tillana Nadridim Tadaratani Nadridritum Nadridritum Tim Nanana Tillana Nadridim Tadaratani Nadridritum Nadridritum Tim Nanana Tajanu Dimi the Janu the Dimi the Tarikatakatam Tani the Jam Tani the Jam Tani the Tillana Nadridim Tadaratani Nadridritum Tachanu dhimi ta chanu ta dhimi ta tarikadakadakadak ta chanu dhim chanu ta dhimi ta tarikadakadakadak ta chanu dhimi ta chanu ta dhimi ta tarikadakadakadak ta chanu dhim ta nita cham 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 ta nita tilla na ta tridhim ta tara ta ni na tridhritum ตะตะริกิตตะกะติตะริกิตตะกะตุมตะริกิตตะกะนัมตะริกิตตะกะติลลานะนะตริทิมตะตะรัตะนินาตริทิตุมตะตะริกิตตะกะติตะริกิต
ಅಸಮಾನಮಾಯ ಅಸಮಾನಮಾಯ ತಿಲ್ಲಾನ ಮುರಳಿ ನಾದ ವಿನೋದ ಮಾಯ ತಿಲ್ಲಾನ ಕುಂತಳವರಾಳಿ ರಾಗ ವೈಭವ ಸಮಪನಿದ ಸ ಸನಿದ ಪಮಸ ಸಮಪನಿದ ಸ ಸನಿದ ಪಮಸ ಸಮಪನಿದ ಸ ಸನಿದ ಪಮ ತಜನು ಧಿಮಿತ ಜನು ತಿಮಿತ ತರಿಗಡೆ ಗಡದ ತಜನು ಧಿಮ್ ಜನು ತಿಮಿತ ತರಿಗಡೆ ಗಡದ ತಜನು ಧಿಮ್ ಜನು ತಿಮಿತ ತರಿಗಡೆ ಗಡದ ಝಂ ತನಿತ ಝಂ ತನಿತ ಝಂ ತನಿತ ಝಂ ತನಿತ ಝಂ ತನಿತ ಝಂ ತಝಂ ತನಿತ ಝಂ thank you very much thank you very much uh, if you enjoyed thank you so much thank you if you enjoyed uh, either the singing or the talking you are most welcome to subscribe to my youtube channel which is called <laughs> music box it is m u s i q u e b o x music box you can find i can find uh, some funny videos also where i do dub smash to old hindi film songs a lot of uh, funny things also but lot of uh, valuable stuff is also there so please feel welcome to uh subscribe or just watch if you watch and you like then you can subscribe don't subscribe just like that and thank you so much for making my i have come to varanasi once to pollute the ganga by chucking some ashes of a dead relative <laughs> so that is many many decades ago that was a very unpleasant trip but now uh, this trip as long as i live i won't forget thanks to all of you so thank you so much <laughs> Thank you sir for addressing our freshers with your insightful words and such a melodious song. I'm sure everyone here had a wonderful time. We would now like to invite the faculty in charge student counseling services Professor V Ramanathan to kindly felicitate his highness Prince Ramavarma with the memento and present his insights on the session. Actually the full credit goes to him. because i don't know how he discovered me he dug me up from youtube i think so he just sent me a mail and it was so completely unexpected to get an invitation from varanasi and to get an invitation from bhu and iit and to give a talk so big big thanks to <laughs> if i may take two minutes uh, just before felicitating him i have been an ardent uh, follower of your music right from when i started knowing music and it was not just your musical rendition but also the way you connect with the younger generation and especially i felt none none better than our freshers who have just finished their school and entering the portals of their higher education should get inspired that there are multitudes of career options if that you may want to restrict to but this is not just about career also although we are inducting into our institute it's inducting into life so personalities like them who are wearing multiple caps who are known for their authority in one particular field or perhaps more i felt should be ideal to come and inspire them because we talk to them only in classes and then that's not what we really intend to transpire so i, I hope you are happy so if you are happy then we are all happy maybe <laughs> as you said we'll have one more concert so for that once that materializes then i'll answer that question so 
with those few words, why once again, thank you so very much. And I was also quite surprised by taking two minutes on the question of language and melting. I was glad that was asked. And India cannot be a better country than an example for that. And just in the spirit of what the speaker has said, I was reminded of this uh, attempt in the medieval age by uh, its uh, attributed author is anonymous, but I'll just first say it and then I'll perhaps explain it. Ekasmin divasava sana samaye metha gaya bagme kachit atra kuranga bala nayana gultod tithi khadi tam drishtva nava yauvana shashimukhi metha me moha meja pada. So, like that it goes. Those of you could catch it. Ekasmin divasava sana samaye. It's in Sanskrit. Metha gaya bagme. It's in Urdu. Kachit atra kuranga bala nayana. Yuvati thi, jok sundar thi. Kachit atra kuranga bala nayana. Gul tod ti thi khadi. Again Urdu. She's plucking the flowers. And how our speaker got attracted to somebody at that yauvan. Tam drishtvar nava yauvana shashimukhi. Me moha meja pada. So like that he goes on composing and what best example of melting of language we can see than this particular composition I got immediately recollected. And to my friend who asked that question, I urge him to read about Kavi Kokil Vidyapati and I know many of you are from Darbhanga or Mithila here, should read the history of Kavi Kokil Vidyapati whose statue is in front of the railway station. Other than that, the younger generation hardly seems to know. Why I am saying this is when he was writing there was no difference between Bengali or Hindi or Khadi. He was writing in a different language which is considered progenitor of even Bengali. So with those few words, I would like to now felicitate and thank the speaker who has taken pains to come all the way. He's a very busy man, very tough to catch him. I'm glad that he acceded to our request and came and addressed. And I, I am also equally glad that he's, he also enjoyed this interaction with you all. With those words, I once again, on behalf of my institute, I thank you, sir, for having come. Thanks. And this, I believe, is just an icebreaker. We would expect you to see you more again in our campus. My, my See you next time. Bye. <laughs>